Welcome to the zoo, home of the Kalamazoo Curling Club, the Wings Event Center in Kalamazoo, Michigan. 2023 USA Curling Mixed Doubles National Championships are here. 16 teams have been competing for the right to represent the United States at the 2023 World Mixed Doubles Championships in Gangneung, South Korea. Here in the booth tonight, once again, Tyler George, joined by good friend Eileen Geving. Eileen just finishing up competition and gracious enough to join us. Thanks, Eileen. Yeah, no problem. Happy to be here. I love playing just as much as I love watching. So <laughs> it'll be a good game. You get the best seat in the house now. And we look at the playoff bracket. Persinger replies taking on Anderson Stapera after their victory this afternoon. And Taylor Anderson, Ben Richardson now on this winning streak, squeaking their way into the playoffs now in the semifinals against the undefeated Corey TC and Corey Dropkin. That will be our feature game today. Here you see the final round robin standings. Those top three teams did advance to the playoffs. Persinger Plies going undefeated as well. Devin Schuster, Hamilton, Hamilton with five and two records advanced. And in pool two, TC Dropkin also undefeated through the round robin. Now in the semifinals after this bye, Anderson Stapera and Anderson Richardson ended up advancing to the playoffs. Taylor and Ben, by virtue of their victory over Delaney Strauss and Danny Casper in this morning's tiebreaker game, secured their playoff berth. Here is our feature matchup again. Corey TC and Corey Dropkin undefeated with that bye. 7-0 in the competition. Taking on Taylor Anderson and Ben Richardson on a bit of a Cinderella run after, again, winning their last round-robin game and getting some help to get into the, a tiebreaker scenario, winning that game and then winning their quarterfinal matchup against the Hamilton siblings this afternoon all the way now into the semifinals. Here are the sheets being used. Sheet B, Persinger Plies and Anderson Stapera is actually sheet D for TC Dropkin and well, I have them reversed now too. Persinger Plies and Anderson Stapera are over on D. TC Dropkin, Anderson Richardson on sheet D. So Eileen, obviously a lot of experience watching uh, these teams for me and a lot of experience playing against them for you. Any expectations for this game tonight outside of just a well-played game? I mean, both are amazing teams. So really it's going to come down to that consistency and making the shots uh, when they really matter. All four of these teams playing extremely well right now. And obviously to get to the semifinals of a national championship, you have to be playing at your best. Teams are just getting ready for the introductions and one last mop being run over. And Eileen, a good run for you. and. John Schuster here, and for those that don't know, uh, Eileen and John only played three events together this season, and three events together, period, as this is your first year playing together, but uh, you guys seem to come together very quickly to be able to reach the level that you did in this competition. Yeah, we've been with each other for so long. Um, every Olympic trials that him and I have both been involved in the exact same Olympic trials for, you know, 20, 25 years or however long that we've been side by side competing against each other. And um, for so many days, we'd be practicing at the Team Curling Club where we're sheet right next to each other. And so finally, at the end of last year, it's like, well, we're always here at the same time together. Why don't we practice together? <laughs> so um, it kind of came together in that way. And it's been really good. Sounds a little bit similar to how John and I came together, too. Just why don't we do this is playing against each other. So maybe playing together might work out. You guys it was just being next to each other and deciding, hey, it makes sense to practice together and maybe put a team together, too. Yeah. To have the, the run that you did with that little amount of time playing together shows how well that you two meshed. And we, we saw that, too, from the commentary booth that there seemed to be a really good reward that... Uh, 
you guys fed off each other really well. A lot of positivity. Obviously, had a lot of experience to play with John too. But talk about the uh, the match for you guys. How you worked together. Um, I think we just have a lot of respect for each other. So um, sometimes, you know, if I'm really adamant about something, you know, John's really good about like taking that and either you know siding with me or explaining his view of things, and we are able to like really quickly then decide on something and in mixed doubles the time just goes so quickly so um, to be mostly on the same page and if we're not um, we can clearly articulate it to each other and come to a really easy decision um, to keep the game flowing and we find that we play better without a lot of contemplation and just being confident and okay this is what we like we're gonna do it yeah having that uh, not just rapport but when you're on the same page talking about strategy and what shots you want to play, especially for a game that moves as quickly as this one does, as you mentioned, makes such a big difference. And if you feel like you're battling your teammates and you're not on the same page tactically and how you want to put ends together with that time running quickly, it not only does it to instill less confidence in the shots themselves, but if you're running low on time from longer discussions, then it's harder to uh, execute the shots that you're playing as well. So, Right. Yeah, and we've been, you know, it's interesting because our earlier tournaments, we were having much different, like, split times or slightly different brooms, and we actually found here that we were very similar to each other. So we had a really good time when it came to, like, deciphering where to put the broom or where we want to slide out and what we're aiming for um, and knowing that our rocks will run fairly similar and the slight nuances we could just adjust with uh, where we're aiming and really able to discuss that before um, and I think that helped us make a lot of shots. First stone on the way of this semifinal matchup. We are down to the final four teams in the national championships. Corey Dropkin as he tends to do following down with this rock and I think he's the only player really in the competition that we've seen that likes to go back and forth, get clocks, stay ready to sweep those stones. He's kind of tireless out there. Doesn't seem to care that there's any any extra en uh, energy expended and does a couple of extra laps compared to the rest of the field yeah i mean there's a definite science behind that um i know like when we were playing women's that when there's a big draw and another team is throwing and you know you're going to have to follow that same path like to walk alongside it and kind of get an idea of how it feels as it's sliding and um maybe if it's grabbing or turning over a little more like, you can feel that just by going alongside it. So it, it is a lot of back and forth, but there is some knowledge that he's taking from that. Outturn bump attempt from Corey Tisi, her first stone of the semifinal, and a, a little bit of a layoff for these teams with the semifinal bye after winning their pools. But still, for a long competition like this, not a bad thing to get off your feet for a little while. Get away from curling. And I know that's always been really important for, for myself and the teams I've played on. And I'm sure you'd agree, Eileen, that you don't want to be focused on curling straight through when you're downtime. You want to get away from things a little bit. Clear your mind as much as you can. You're playing in a national championship. Difficult not to be thinking about the tournament all the time. But, but getting away and doing something different and just getting a little bit of a reboot. And I'm sure these teams spent as much time as they could doing that in between with the layoff from the round robin of the semis. Yeah, it's interesting because we, a lot of nights we'd go back to, we had an Airbnb that we were sharing with uh, Jason Smith and Kim Rime, and a lot of nights we would have dinner and actually watch curling, and I, it was so weird when now we came off to the playoffs and the two pools came together because it almost felt like we were watching a different tournament, even though it was within the same um, but because of the draw times and being the split pools, it was kind of like we were in our own little world, and so were they. And now everybody's come together. So, Corey Dropkins' first stone. Trying to get inside of this yellow stone that Ben Richardson threw. See if they can he gets tap to the it a little. Inside. Not too bad. Now sitting... Looks like two from the overhead. Eileen, I should tell you, there have been seven measurements in feature games throughout this competition. 
I've correctly predicted every single winner of the measurements. So I did hear that. I really don't want there to be any more measurements so it doesn't get ruined. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a tournament even sitting at home where I was able to do that. So this is the impossible dream at this point. Let's just make sure there's no measurements, get clean through this game, let me take my perfect record and move on to the next tournament. We shall see. <laughs> Ben Richardson playing the intern, and, and Eileen, I can tell you from the morning tiebreaker today, we didn't have Ben and Taylor for the feature game in the quarters, but the tiebreaker this morning, Ben was near flawless, made pretty much everything, and really had uh, Casper and Strauss chasing in almost every end they played. Yeah. And when that middle player, when, it, when you start with a made shot too, and, and Taylor played extremely well, especially starting ends off, but when that middle player is making everything like Ben was, it's, you know, that's three fifths of the, the shots that you're throwing. And Ben was really on top of his game and didn't give him much room for error on the opposite side. Yeah, it makes a big difference. So Corey and Corey here, starting with the hammer due to their seven and O record being the number one seed. So this is, one of the draws where there was not a draw for Hammer and they got Hammer by virtue of being the one seed. That is correct. The The team with the bye not only gets the, the Hammer, but also gets choice of color for stones. And once we get to this point in the competition, you're able to select stones from any of the sheets and use the ones that you like the best. So we were not notified of which stones they chose, but they're not necessarily the rocks from the sheets that they're playing on. They could be rocks from different sheets. So the one seeds would have gotten choice on those stones before their counterparts. I'm not sure which of the two, because they were both 7-0, and oh, got to select stones first. Because if you have the same record, and <laughs> there's no way to differentiate, I'm not sure. I believe it one. was a choice between B and C for the game played on B, and then the game played on D had the choice of that color between D and E rocks. Okay, so they didn't let them choose from all sheets, just from a couple of the sheets for now to make it fairest, and that makes sense. If you can't find a good set between all those options, then you're probably not reading the rocks really well. So that's plenty for the players to deal with. And I believe for the final, then, that option is for the two the two teams, whichever rocks from It'll all be the from sheets. from anywhere. Right. Yep. Good thing I have you here to straighten me out on that. I mean, <laughs> I'm not in those meetings now, so yep, I'm just guessing. Reading the rule book. That too. Quite closely. <laughs> yeah, you know I don't do that. <laughs> I help decide what's in the rule book on the Competition and Rules oh, Commission, but I don't read it after. That perfect weight and just rubbed off that red there. Yeah, slight error there from Richardson. A mess of stones now around the forefoot. There on cheat D, we see a mess of stones in the forefoot. And I mean, we joked earlier, in the, the last draw, that seems as though every time there's you know, seven, eight, nine rocks around the four, somebody scores one. Yes. Which makes sense with alternating with your opponent and battling for position that it is very likely somebody's only going to score a point. Yeah, you're really dealing with such a small scoring area in mixed doubles. Yeah, major difference from doubles and men's and women's where a lot of times in men's and women's you're throwing indirect scoring points, drawing to the back of the 8 foot or side of the 12 foot. And unless it's a power play, it's very difficult to make those rocks count in mixed doubles, that almost all the scoring points are at least around or near the four foot circles. Are we dropping on this intern draw? Looks like there's a port there, Eileen, to try to get through and sit another counter. He might be able to rub off this yellow. Just rolls to staggered underneath, and now a little slash in possibly for Taylor Anderson. Yeah, looking to just cut cut down the reds in the two in here if they can slash in one of those yellows to at least eliminate one of them. I think on the angle that it's at, you can probably clear both of those two reds, at least out of the forefoot. Possibly sit two in the angles. 
play very well for Yellow with the way those reds are staggered. Now Corey dropped the stone that ended up bouncing off of that yellow and rolling half buried. Did not help the angles for TC and Dropkin. So the short in turn angle run for Taylor Anderson. Possible to leave both and maybe even stick that yellow and sit two. Very important shot early. Could be sitting two or looking at a draw for three depending on the result. Taylor's been very steady throughout this winning streak to get to the semifinals. Her final stone of this first. Looking to hit maybe a third of this stone, Eileen, somewhere in there, maybe even a hair thinner. Just papers by the back, one. so close to getting both. So red still sitting one, taking a look now at that red stone in the top of the eight foot, Eileen, do you think they have enough that's, to play yeah, that? That's a very lonely yellow in there, and it's, it's pretty thin. Yeah, they have two options that they could play to try to clear that yellow. There may be enough of the red on the overhead here on the left side of the center line, on the outturn side, to play that back into the yellow, and it would miss the backing. Or that slash they originally looked at on the intern yeah, side. almost similar to what Taylor just played, right. only using the red this time. And even just clearing that stone would be three for red if they could ever catch it thin enough and just paper that straight sideways. Although here, going with this out turn, yeah, this is the one that we looked at. Red almost fighting the top four foot there. Yeah, it's kind of. As long as you make contact, there's a good chance that it's going to go back into that yellow. I think if Corey hits what he can see, or what she can see, sorry, Corey and Corey. If TC hits what she can see here, I, I think that yellow goes and the shooter stays. It could possibly be for five. I, I like this one more when they were looking at the yeah, thin I slash originally. This, if you're going to play it, might as well play it for the maximum Almost amount of points. Almost right into the pocket, too, and you'd still be getting three or four. And I like that they're playing this with a softer weight, too. Very close here. Needs to come up a little bit. Got a turn. Bumps it out of the forest. How far can Corey take it? Only two points. Well, almost feels like dodging a bullet, giving up two for Anderson and Richardson there. It could have been as many as five. So two is the score in the first end for TC and Dropkin. They lead 2-0 after one. Beginning of the second end here at the 2023 USA Curling Mixed Doubles National Championships semifinal round. Corey and Corey, TC and Dropkin leading Taylor Anderson, Ben Richardson 2-0. And with the start of the second end, we're going to tell you once again about Warm Room Hero. Is your curling club website clunky and unworkable? Are you tired of your club relying on social media because your website just does not work for your members? Finally, the curling management software your club has been waiting for is here. Check out Warm Room Hero at curling.club today. Following that two-point end, that could have possibly been as many as five, I mean, or ETC throwing her first stone. And you said at the break, too, and I agree, if they throw that with a little more weight, then coming off of your own stone, that's almost assuredly going to 
clear that Yellowstone and be a minimum of three points. And they elected to play it softer, going for the max amount of points. Right, five, to keep but, the shooter. Yeah. And hopefully, if you don't pocket him and lose your top one in the top eight. Um, but I think more weight, even if you did lose the top one or your shooter, you're, you're guaranteed a three. And then it's really about, do we, we feel like three is enough? We're comfortable with that? Or do we think, boy, if we really go after this, we could get five? What's the weight that we need to play to give us the best chance of making that? That's just a team decision. It's a tolerance, yeah, yep. of what you're comfortable with. And, and there's a lot of games. So taking a risk early when either way you're going to be rewarded, that's a choice that they made. And, and it just, in that instance, it just yeah. needed a little more curl. And, Two good freezes to start off this end by Corey Tisi and Taylor Anderson. Yeah, really great start um, for both teams here. So Corey Dropkin now playing this outturn freeze, trying to stack another stone on this pile. Looks like it's and be dead on the nose again, maybe a little staggered on the high side. And Eileen, we've we've harped on this throughout the competition too, that with the shorter end, you really have to decide early if the setup means you need to bail. And it's looking like maybe Ben is uh, going to play the run back already. Yeah, I think they've the decided it's time. There's not a lot of ways to get in for a second shot right now. Oh no, they are they are actually going with that draw. There's the steely gaze of Wayne Anderson. The Anderson parents having a pretty stressful weekend, I would say, with both daughters now in the national semifinals and the possibility of an all Anderson final. Yeah, that's best case scenario for their family right now that they haven't faced off in the playoffs against each other at this point. <laughs> I'm not sure that they would say it's best case scenario that somebody's going to have to lose in the final if they do play each other. But they will see, they would see one of their daughters going to the world championships. Okay, how far did <laughs> Never had that happen with myself and Courtney, thankfully, yeah. that <laughs> right. we faced off in any real meaningful I'll game. Kathy O on the other side of things, watching her young charges. Kathy's been a very busy coach throughout this season, working with, with these two, also with Tabitha Peterson squad, going to the Women's World Championships and part-timing with Delaney Strauss's squad with my sister Courtney Benson, uh, her first child and taking some time away from that. Kathy's done a ton for a lot of teams, heard all good things from everybody who's worked with her. Eileen, once again, rocks piling up in the fours, and the angle is playing fairly well for TC and Dropkin right now. Looking like maybe Richardson wants to try to get two of these reds moving. Can only see maybe a quarter of that stone, so they have to play it soft, but. Now again, lining up where they want to hit it, I think not where they're actually going to put the broom down, but what kind of weight would you like if you were going to try to move the red on top of the button and the one on the back of the button? I think in this case, something like right around back line, you know, you want to make sure that your shooter stays on top of that red so that you can use it later. You know it's going to most likely take more than one shot to get both those reds out of the button area. And so really keeping that shooter could be important here. And with the broom that they're taking, looks like they're playing at least a decent amount of weight, maybe normal with it that It does broom. look like that, and maybe they can pick it across and hope to get both reds moving. It does look to be the weight, about normal pass from Richardson. They can't see much of it, so they'll have to play it pretty tight to that guard. Eileen, you'll find doing mixed doubles commentary that you're always very thankful when the player in the house, or there is a player in the house, to put a broom down so we oh, can nice tell shot. what they're throwing. That's a really well-played shot by Richardson. He could not see much of that. That was really well thrown. 
And he's been so steady and unflappable throughout this run on this winning streak. Quite the year for Ben with the silver medal at the World University Games, the silver medal at the men's nationals. I'm sure he'd like to change the color of that medal for this one if he can get on the podium. But guaranteed once again as they are having uh, both of the semifinal teams as bronze medalists that he, ha he will add more He'll hardware. He'll have some hardware for sure. Keep making shots like that and we shall see. I believe he would be the only player in the United States to medal in three different disciplines, disciplines. then. If you're talking university games, I guess, as a, an international competition, we're going to count that. And then the did they did they have a play down for the university games? I believe yes, they did. So they okay, did. you can even count that as your national medal. Yeah. So even outside of the world games, three national medals this season for for Ben Richardson. That is that's quite the accomplishment. Nice shot there by Corey. I coached him for one year, so I think I can take at least a little bit of credit. Maybe all of it. All of it. <laughs> that works better for me. <laughs> Extremely hard worker, and uh, we mentioned earlier in the week, uh, House of Hearts celeb skip rookie as well for this year. Oh, good for him. Always a fun event. How much do I have people to may have seen the Facebook post uh, right, right there, as well as mine in the House of Hearts uh, Facebook page that's able to convince Matt Hamilton to rejoin the House of Hearts crew for this year as well. Matt's only played it once, and he won it. Oh, so boy. I'd like to see him lose a game or two, maybe, so we don't have to hear about it for the rest of our lives. Love having Matt back. Glad he's able to donate his time for us again. Richardson oh, staying shot. hot. That slash double. And just making everything right now. Now sitting two. In a really good position, too, Eileen, to try yeah, to Yeah, that yellow it. is not going anywhere without losing a red. Yeah, there's, there's really no way they can play that side, that yellow on the side of the forefoot with those two reds behind it. So pretty much just a soft weight hit and roll in. Corey TC trying to get under cover and make the two as difficult as possible for Anderson and Richardson. But regardless of where this rolls, Eileen, I would think that it's almost a guaranteed shot for two or at least an attempt for two. Yeah, is she playing that? Uh, with tap weight or to freeze? I was guessing that they'd play hack, and try to move it out of count so that their own two, they make sure at so least that their no, own cool. no three in play. Right. Now you want to make this worst case a two here. Corey TC, her final stone in this second end. seem so weight sensitive with these pack type of weights too. Now this one does take a turn easily by the guard. Really nice shot there by Corey TC. Great shot. It's just a quarter of that stone maybe peeking out on the outturn side so. It does curl enough she can get there to bump that. And they do have a stopper rock there too, I mean, that red stone that's just off of the forefoot in the back gates. If they did play it with a little more weight, they could use that to roll into. With the broom that Ben has down, it looks like they're probably just playing maybe back line weight somewhere in there, if Yeah, that. back line to hack. Final stone of this second end, important one here for Taylor Anderson. Just needs to bump that red stone out of the forefoot and stick around for a second point. Be a good clean throw there from Taylor. Drock kind of turning a little bit early, need to hold the line. Sweeping hard to hold it and get by. Still by right now. Looks to be good. Perfectly done by Taylor. Great shot. Two yellow. We do have a deuce right back. So with that great shot by Taylor Anderson, after two ends of play, TC and Dropkin, Anderson and Richardson tied at two.
third end of action in our feature game in the semifinals of the 2023 USA Curling Mixed Doubles National Championships. 2-2, TC and Dropkin tied with Anderson and Richardson. Tyler George here with Olympian Eileen Geving. Eileen, we got some shot making going back and forth. This looks like it's going to be a fun one to call. Yeah, this has been a really well played game so far. Everybody is making just about everything. And yeah, we keep commenting on, on Ben's shot making because he's making the most difficult ones. But on the opposite side of things, Corey Dropkin and Corey DC really haven't missed much either. Yeah, it's been mostly draws on their side. Really good rock placement. Everybody's keeping their rocks in a high, usable spot above the T line. Rock stopping a little bit short. Come around attempt from Taylor. Just in the top of the eight foot. Yeah, the good thing about even though that is a little short of where they wanted is the fact that it actually didn't curl all the way underneath the guard. They have um, pretty easy access to tap that up later in the end. Over on sheet D, we have identical score. Bersinger and Plies taking two in the first, and Sarah Anderson, Andrews Tapera answering with their own two in the second end. So all the singles that we saw in the quarterfinals now all twos starting out the semis. With all the games that I've called throughout this week, I need a little something to keep me on my toes in the morning a lot of times. And godsend for that has been our local Tim Hortons here, sponsor for the event. You can wake up to freshness with Tim's two for six dollar breakfast sandwiches featuring fresh cracked eggs paired with the new vanilla flavored cream cold brew, chocolate cold foam, or a vanilla flavored latte with chocolate syrup, or just a black coffee like I have. Thank you to our local sponsor, Tim Hortons, located at 5709 West Nidge Avenue near I-94 in Portage. Still can't get over doing Tim Hortons ads for a U.S. tournament. Right. I really enjoyed having Timbit snacks every once in a while. The perfect size little donut bites they have. Yeah, the perfect size to eat a million of them and have the equivalent of five donuts without realizing <laughs> it. Those evil Timbits. Oh, but so good. <laughs> yeah, that's why they're evil. So the intern bump here from Dropkin. Good setup here for TC and Dropkin. Could possibly sit three just by moving this stone back a little ways. And yep. Rolling in. And Eileen, I think it's one where you do want to move this stone and force your opponent to look at three now that they have hammer. If they can make a shot to get out of the end, it's probably only for possibly stealing one if they can get to that point. But with the hammer, with this setup now, you're going to take every chance you can get to score a three or four with the rocks where they're at. Yeah, that was perfectly executed. There really is nowhere for Ben and Taylor to draw in there now. Um, so it looks like they're electing to use Taylor's first rock to run into this pile. See if Ben can continue his reign of terror with all these doubles and run-ins. Out turn slash on that stone, as you correctly remarked on Eileen, that they left it open so that they could use it, not bury the top of the eights. And that's exactly what they're doing right now. So those little things make a big difference for these situations. And not overthrowing this one. Really like to stick around if they can. This is close once again. Let's spill that stone out and move things around. So yeah. now first and third yep. for TC and Dropkin. That can count top fours for Anderson and Richardson. Boy, it is a thousand degrees up here tonight. Maybe it all the people in the building, I don't know. Very warm up here. It's been a nice, comfortable temperature all week uh, long. No, I thought it was good. We'll move our booth onto the ice. Yeah. I'm going to stay here still. <laughs> I had enough of that in Denver. <laughs> yeah. Dropkin, I so believe, probably playing a similar shot that to what he just threw. same shot he just played, I assume. That one looked like it had a little bit of outward momentum on the release. It did. Oh. T 
see enough of these stones from that angle, you kind of get a sense of how it's coming out of their hand. Really now starting to turn yep. over. Yep. Hard. Hard, 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 hard. Ends up jamming in our read correct on that Eileen. Just a little bit of pop on that release. Does jam, but sitting second, third, and fourth, that yellow stone, very lonely. Yeah, Ben and Taylor really have to decide if they're going to go all in and, and draw and push for a steal or if they want to start eliminating rocks. Um, you know, the downside with that, yep, does look like they're going to play that hit. Yeah, and you saw Ben's signal, too. If we knows this or even just roll a couple inches in, that double is playing into the jam on those red stones. So they don't want to roll all the way in front of their own. Nose is just fine. Maybe a little roll in to get second count. But you're willing to let them chase the rock on the button if they want to. And it probably takes the big end out of play. So smart call here right. from Richardson and Anderson. It's always smart when they agree with us. Yes. That's the most important. No intern pass on the way from Ben. And it just roll maybe six inches oh, yeah. in. Whoa. Actually playing the full roll all the way underneath now. So I guess when Ben was signaling for that, he was saying this is okay if we end up here. But they were playing the roll in. Yeah, it's it's tricky to call that roll because there's so many bad spots that it could roll to to leave um, kind of an easy double for Corey and Corey. Yeah, interesting angles now with where these stones are. We'll listen to see what Corey's thinking and what Corey's thinking. I think it's a little safer. Corey TC saying, leaves this shot safer than playing that double. Playing the freeze to that stone on the button. Try to score two with the last two stones and instead of trying to make those rocks count in the back. And if you did play that double, Eileen, you'd have to try to get Extremely lucky to not dead jam on one of those right. or jam you, on both. If you don't make the double and you curl up too much, you jam. And if you hit it too thin, you roll out and it probably rolls back into one of the reds. So I think this freeze, you know, he's played this way to the shots prior to this. And so I'd like to be locked right on this stone. Looks like the weight's all there. With the striking bands as live as they are, it'll bounce off little ways. So it is shot rock. Not a bad position. It looks like Taylor may have room to chip that out through the hole. Just a matter of where it goes with those back two red stones as well. They also could just lob the freeze in, try to force. There is definitely some risk in playing to try to chip it through the hole. If you ever jam and over curl, shooter rolls out, you may end up giving up a shot for the pile. Right. That's what Ben's saying. I think now. I like the freeze personally. Yeah, it's a very difficult two. If you I think this is probably the play there. I'm not actually like sure where the shot for two would be right. to make that freeze. I really like the discussions here between these two. They seem to be talking through all the possibilities without wasting a ton of time at the same time. Neither team particularly long on time. Ben and Taylor a little bit behind pace, but nothing crazy. Now with 13 and a half minutes left on their clock, 14.30 for TC and Dropkin. So freeze attempt for Taylor Anderson. There might be an intern draw to the very backside. You do, yeah, of you'd have, almost have to curl button. past your own red. Yeah. To get in there for two at this point. I think you'd be willing to give that one to him if you, if they make it. Tip your cap. Then trying to carry this one down as far as he can get it. Okay, that's fine. Sure that may accomplish the shot, purpose. Though. I think that it didn't necessarily have to be all the way to it. It was just a matter of blocking that draw and making that double un inaccessible. Yeah, and you saw uh, Corey drop and take a look at the backstone to see who was fourth count, as that might make right. a difference if they tried to might play the double. Might be worth risking that double. Right. 
double is still there. If they elected to play it, there's a chance you could clip your own stone playing it, so a little bit of risk, but they are playing this in-turn draw. Need to touch the side of the button or get closer to it than that stone in the top of the forefoot on the left side. The Very order. difficult. A lot of rotation here from TC. Really, Eileen, I, I would think that on this shot, that's maybe one that you want to have a little less rotation to get to finish at the end, but don't think that's going to get there regardless. So smart shot there by Anderson and Richardson, forcing a difficult draw for two and just forcing the one. After three ends of play, TC and Dropkin leading Anderson and Richardson three to two. City's Orthopedics is ready to go with more doctors, specialty services, and convenient urgent care locations. Ready, set, TCO. the fourth end in our feature matchup the semifinals of the 2023 USA Curling Mixed Doubles National Championships Corey TC and Corey Dropkin leading Taylor Anderson and Ben Richardson 3-2 three two after three ends of play back and forth battle so far Eileen, I really haven't had uh, a ton of danger on either side some good shots especially in the, the middle portions of these ends to get out of any possible trouble that there might be so we've had some pretty good setups for teams with hammer until they get to the final stones and pretty much every time it's been a difficult shot for the final thrower for an extra point or avoiding trouble leading up to that point by by the middle players yeah it seems both the ladies here are putting the rocks dead frozen onto this back one and stacking them on top of each other so it's really keeping the game tight when Everybody's making everything, and it's just stacking in shot after shot and just getting those right angles. We haven't had an end yet where there was a bad miss with the first stone so that the opposing team was able to attack and keep the opposition chasing. We've really been back and forth, freeze, refreeze, and only one real bail shot so far, too, from Richardson, one of the ends. But... Mostly it's just been back and forth, taps, freezes, battling for position. Yeah, made shot after made shot. It's pretty close again from Taylor Anderson trying to get it to turn over. Let's bounce off a little, but a little he's bounce. cornered. A little bit of an opening here for Dropkin to try to lob one down. Play to a freeze or a little tap. Scoreboard staying mirrored over on sheet D. Score of one for Persinger implies. Leading three to two over Sarah Anderson. Anders to Para. Dropkin now playing this in turn freeze. Likes the weight, just keeping it clean. Looping a little bit for line, trying to just touch that yellow stone. Sets up great on the angles, really nice too. Shot. Really well done. And a theme again throughout mixed doubles and this week that we've, we've mentioned a lot. Now those stones in a position where it's going to take two rocks 
to move those around and unlock it. And again, wasting 40% of your opponent's stones on one particular rock setup. So important in keeping advantage and keeping your opponent from being able to attack. Yeah, really comes down to keeping the rocks, your rock ahead of the other teams or higher in the house. So here he's playing the run, hoping to move some of those reds, unlock them off the button there. Let's see if Richardson can stay hot. A little bit of a bail shot here. You don't like how those are set up. This one looks like it might be hanging just a touch. Coming up. Papers just by. Just goes by. That's about as big a miss as we've seen from Ben. Yep. Just a half inch off of where he needed to hit. Maybe they'll try to replace this guard now to Eileen and make yeah, Anderson and Richard waste another stone. We'll probably see this guard thrown up and another run back attempted. Dropkin cleaning this rock in for the guard. Hello once again to the beaches in Hawaii to Marcus Gleaton. Gleaton's company, Mimic Insurance, the Gleaton Agency has been serving the educational community in Southwest Michigan since 2006. Call them for all your home and automobile insurance needs. Eileen, I've jokingly said that I was gonna give Marcus's personal phone number out on the air to call him for business or whatever reasons so that he gets annoyed while he's on his vacation in Hawaii but he's only got to make it one more game and one more read for me to not do that as the finals are tomorrow there again is the picture of Marcus on the beach expect uh, that Hawaii tan coming back to snow and cold here in Kalamazoo eventually Richardson does make the run to open things up this time Leaves the shooter, so still guarded, but now a Yellowstone in front. Eileen, I think we'll probably see a third go at that run now that it's okay. a Yellowstone where these rocks are set up. I think so. And you may be looking at and saying, well, they lost their own stones and the Reds are still in there. But that's a good shot because there's no way to remove those stones behind cover without taking the yellow backing away. So that's a made shot for Ben. And now in a position where Whatever drop can throw is in. I think they want this, again, right down into the forefoot. Other option would be just to lob up another guard, but I think yeah, they want to make... calling to line it right up on top of those other reds in there. Maybe leave a little space and placing it in the top eight. So if he does make the run, it has to be more precise before it, that rock, if it stops in the top eight, before it can run into the pile. Rob can sweeping to get this to finish go underneath. And Looks like just about knows to lose all three here, Eileen. It does. The Richardson immediately going down to the other end. He knows what he needs to do. We can repeat that throw from the last one. They may be sitting two. The Rays Rock undercover. I mean, extremely excited to see this one come down the sheet. Which is really just trying not to freeze out there, too. Yeah, it's quite cold out there. I had a lot of layers on playing to stay warm. Even though I was sweeping a lot, it's still. Richardson, a bit of an error there. That one, a little tight out of hand, exactly where he threw it. So now a, a guard we will see. Big opportunity here for TC and Dropkin. The, the swings in this game, Eileen, we, we talked about, even though it was a run triple, really it was a nose hit on that guard. With very little margin for error, you make that, and all of a sudden looking at a two or a three, instead now you're looking at having to make a very difficult shot against a steal of three. The difference one shot can make is huge when you're only throwing the five rocks down. Kathy O can barely contain her excitement with the steal opportunity now. Final stone of the fourth for Corey TC. About how far out would you want to throw this guard, I think? Well, I don't foresee them playing a run back into 
the house with it. So um, I think that the tighter that you are to the rings, the more that it could shrink um, the draw area and having to navigate it as well as protect those rocks in the house. That's a really nice spot for it. I don't believe they're going to take on any type of hit here, so Taylor Anderson's going to need to draw the side of the button just to give up one point. Don't think the pin is accessible. Doesn't look at like it from there, so. So hoping to cut them down to only one point here. Extremely important shot for Taylor. Just needs to basically touch the button to give up a point and Two point deficit in mixed doubles. Not too much of a concern, but a possibility of as many as three. Final stone of this first half of the game. Taylor Anderson throwing the intern draw. Richardson likes the weight early. I mean, Must be close based on how they're sweeping it. Yeah, we've been using that Columbia logo as the the guide they for. They gotta get by this top one. That's by. Line's no problem. Just needs to Can get, get there, there for Ben. Oh, it's great a great shot. sweep, great shot to just give one. That's you feel like you score That's when you made that favorite. shot. What a shot by Taylor Anderson to keep her team tight and great sweep as well. But I think everybody happy after that end, the steal and the avoided big end. So Going to the fourth end break, it's brought to you by Warm Room Hero, the intuitive curling club software that takes the stress out of schedules, registrations, and more. Warm Room Hero, a platform built for curlers, by curlers. Check out Warm Room Hero at curling.club today. And the score at the break with that steal of one, TC and drop and leading Anderson and Richardson, four to two. Let's say you're in high school and there's a sport you like, but sometimes you think, you know, it might be cool to try a new sport. Twin Cities Orthopedics is ready to go with more doctors, specialty services, and convenient urgent care locations. Ready, set, TCO.
fourth end break here. 2023 USA Curling Mixed Doubles National Championships semifinal round. TC and Dropkin leading Anderson Richardson 4-2. Over on sheet D after a score of one in the fourth end for Anderson and Stepera. 3-3 tie game. No power plays used in either game as of yet. We assure you that that scoreboard we're hoping will be fixed. There, the opposite end they have it correct. <laughs> Tyler George here with Eileen Geving. I only called you Eileen Sorman and twice this week, I think. Only twice? Yeah, and it was when I was really wearing down a little bit from, I think it was the 11th game in three days, somewhere in there, and the brain just went back to autopilot. Yes. And then Sormanen comes in. Well, we've known each other for a very long time. So, yep. and most of my life, you most have known of it, me you're Sormanen. As Sormanen. <laughs> I've never Actually, forgotten your last name. I just went to a reversion. Right. When the brain went into relaxed. The original mode. mode. <laughs> <laughs> and I apologized to Garrett immediately too. I said, "You put the work in. You put the ring on it. You deserve that." So, I fixed it as soon as I could. Well, it's actually pretty funny. Um, Speaking of how Schuster and I became partners, um, I actually met my, well, basically started dating my husband after playing poker at Sarah Schuster and John Schuster's house. Sure, yeah. So my husband was there because his parents are friends with a lot of curlers, and there was a whole group of curlers in our club who would get together and play, and he started showing up to our poker games with all of these curlers, and I thought... Hmm. I think I like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. And we say hi to Garrett and your daughter, Sienna, watching this game. She, I apologize there. Uh, she didn't want to watch the game earlier today, apparently. Yeah, so my husband texted me that our four-year-old was, uh, you know, my husband turned on the game and she decided she didn't really want to watch. <laughs> that didn't mean to throw you under the bus, kiddo. <laughs> yeah, you know, at four years old, it, it's hard to really nail down a kid and, and have them sit still for a lot of time. So I'm not too surprised that that was the case, and I'm sure she was checking in here and there. I know she was cheering for me. I got to FaceTime with her a couple times this week, and um, she's very interested in curling already. So hoping that we can have some of those of us here with kids maybe someday we'll be on the other side of the glass watching them play yeah we we talked about that from uh the the party at the curling club from a little while back with everybody bringing their kids down and uh, already forming the teams for 20 years down the road who's coaching who who's playing with who and you know those are the types of ones we want to keep too those pictures because when those children are curling somewhere down the way and remember back when they were they were tiny and have those pictures available for the Olympic broadcasts and show where they came from and that we used to be young and good at curling too yes at one and point we, we were already pairing them up for mixed doubles and men's and women's teams from all of us getting together and that was for your birthday party I believe we had a whole group of us in Duluth with our kids down there to celebrate it was a little dust in the room there when you guys surprised me. I'm not admitting that it was actual tears even though it was. That was a really great day to get everybody together and, uh, and celebrate there. And that felt more just like a curling celebration and you know, just a bunch of friends getting together. Glad to share that with everyone. Somewhere that feels like home and like there with family after all these years that we've been around each other. No doubt that the Duluth Curling Club is a second home for all of us, and most people feel that way about their curling clubs, too, that that's family in that building all the time, whether you're actually related or not. And everyone in that building certainly was family that day. I like that. No surprise. Five stones in the forefoot. Start out as fifth. And seen a few times throughout the course of the it's week, I learned hard. that the fifth end has been a little bit quicker, you know, the same as we'd see with uh, a regular uh, men's or women's game coming out of the fifth end break, the fourth end break here, after running the mop, got a few misses deep, but 
not as drastic as what we normally see with a fifth end break of a men's or women's game. Yeah, I know I fell victim to that in a couple games here where, and it was even something that we had acknowledged knowing, okay, we just had that sweep and after the break, it, it might be a touch faster this way. And it really does hold true that the, after the break, for some reason, the ice is just, the rocks just seem to glide a little bit better after that break. Really good shot there from Corey Dropkin. Well positioned again. Nick Richardson try to get inside of that stone on the overhead that's on the left side. Maybe even push that red that was just thrown by Dropkin a couple inches over and change that angle a little bit. Yeah, this could be a really pivotal shot here. And signaling for a little bit more broom. I would trust anything he's saying right now with the way he's seeing it and throwing it. And again, on the opposite side of things, you know, the, the shots have been a lot simpler for the Corys. See, especially with Corey Dropkin Stone, just keeping things simple, lobbing draws around, really good position. You know, Corey. McCopkin can play the high hard one very well, but his soft game right now is really on point, and that yeah, positioning has been the difference, I think, in this game right now. I agree. Corey and Corey are really getting the right angles that make it very difficult to remove their stones. going to have another look here. Yeah, they're talking about where they want to roll this to. You heard Corey Dropkin say they'd like to play maybe back eight, wait somewhere in there, try to tap and get inside. Back eight. Back eight, like back, eight back T. Back eights. Couldn't tell if he said back T or back eight on the last, but Corey T's, he didn't for sure say back eight. Out turn tap, Corey Dropkin. Oh, oh, pretty good on the release, maybe a touch on the full side. Really I'm starting to turn. Yep, yep. I think it should get there. Another very nice shot. Yeah, that's well done. Anderson Richardson sitting one, but not a lot of real estate to get a second counter in. isn't a whole lot of space to throw this rock to to try to get counter but the other side of things too with where those reds are lined up all TC and drop can have to do to get shot rock is just touch those red stones could be another steal opportunity too depending on where Richardson's able to leave this yeah and it does look like red could actually come from either side to touch either of those reds to possibly push them in for shot rock if this one is not placed. Out turn draw for Richardson. See where they try to leave this stone. They're trying to come right to the side of the button or at least the top of the button right now. It's a pretty good position. Yeah, that rock is definitely something that they might be able to use later in the end. I think it is still a... a as you said, they could touch both of those stones. If they can just catch a piece of the outside of that red rock, move it a couple inches, they would sit shot. So 
still talking about playing a little bit of weight at the top one. I don't think I'd want to move these around a ton based on where the angles are at right now. Yeah, I'm not sure what they decided on here. Yeah, there's like four different options of shots to play on how to move these around. With nobody in the house, Eileen, now we fall victim as commentators to not having a broom for a gauge to predict what shot they're throwing. <laughs> Playing the outturn looks, side. Looks like it might just be a guard. A little surprised here, Eileen, that they're not trying to at least move those a little bit to get shot. Yes and no. I mean, any time that you force your team to one point, with a lead in an odd end, I think you're pretty happy with that outcome. So I don't see a way, a real easy way for Ben and Taylor to score a second one with a nice guard here. They might. There may be a double tap, but very dangerous to play it as if you touch that red on the center line, you're probably assuredly giving up a steal. Right. Throw it away or you could try a double tap. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> Saying I, what we I said first. They can get to the inside of that back four foot yellow on the left side there to roll up or in. There's not enough of the inside to do that. So. Yeah, they are going to take it on. A little bit of a risk here, but second half of the game, feeling like they really want to try to get this extra point over on sheet D. So the red, yellow tap to the side of the button. Single for Persinger implies to go up 4-3, playing the sixth, and power play now in play for Stepera and Anderson over there. Right on the nose is good. Just playing. Yep, you got it. Maybe back line with a two-rock transfer. I think that's the minimum weight you can play to make this shot. Final stone, Taylor Anderson. Playing a long... Double tap, red to yellow to try to get two. Okay, close. Yep. Line's very close. Yep. Hard. Close. Yep, 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 yep. Close. Look at this try. Wow, what a shot. Is oh, that's so close. Though? I don't know. Don't know that they got second. It looks to be red, I think. So it does look red for it just took the wrong rotation when it bumped and spun a little bit the opposite direction. They're still taking a pretty good look at it, though. Maybe a little closer than they thought. <coughs> they are going to measure these. I'm putting my face up closer to the screen to look at it now. Ah, I don't want to have to ruin my record now, but i got to make a call. I think I'm going to go with red. That was my first thought. Trying to get to 8-0 no on the week. Most nervous I've been now. I want this perfect record. <laughs> so it is a single, at least for yellow for Anderson and Richardson. Measuring for a second point. Tie the game, if so, and ruin my record. Second time, possibly. Nope. nope. It is it red. red. Eight, four, eight. So a steal of one will make it five, two. TC drops. Still a still a single for Anderson Richardson, right? That was the measure for the second oh, point. Oh, you're right. Sorry. Yes. My fault. So the score is four, three. TC and Dropkin leading Anderson and Richardson after six ends of play, five ends of play. The everyday person may not aspire to be a professional athlete or an Olympic athlete. You may just want to be the best person you can be. You just may want to sleep better. You may want to feel better. Thorn has many products that can support all of those things. So it's not just about 
performing or running faster or jumping higher. It's those little things that go into having a higher quality of life. Sixth end of action, our feature game in the semifinals of the 2023 USA Curling Mixed Doubles National Championships. Thanks to our friends at Floor Curl, USA Curling member clubs are entitled to a 20% discount on any Floor Curl inflatable rink set. These rinks only take a minute to inflate or deflate and are the perfect way to promote your club. At summer festivals, events, or anywhere you have a flat surface, no ice required. Visit usacurling.floorcurl.com and use the promo code FCINFLATABLE20. That's usacurling.floorcurl.com, promo code FCINFLATABLE20, valid until March 12th. Trusting that our listeners can spell inflatable, so I'm just giving the FC at the beginning there. Tyler Eileen. George and Eileen, Eileen Geving here. With the start of the sixth end, and Eileen, we, we were mentioning during the break that it's so unfortunate that you make a shot that good, like Taylor Anderson just did, and get nothing from it. And it's only a score of one, but really that's a, when that stone took the wrong rotation after the second bump, that's just a luck thing. There's really no way of knowing which direction that stone would spin once it gets close to nose. And yeah, just a little unlucky, but perfect weight, close enough to get a measurement on it. So well thrown. And two perfect shots here to start out. And six for us as well. And Richardson playing this in turn freeze. And a little surprised, Eileen, that power play wasn't utilized here by TC and Dropkin. Or would you think that they'd save it for either the seventh or the eighth? Um, for John and I this week, we've taken the approach of using it earlier where if if this was my game right now we would be using the power play here in six um, but i think every team has different philosophies about when they want to use that or how they want to use it and that's what makes mixed doubles so interesting one point lead and hammer for tc and dropkin Again, three well-made draws to start this end off. Eyelash away from this game being tied. All important, one-point lead. And if you're TC and Dropkin, I mean, you, you're happy scoring in this end. Even if it's just a single, that's a good result. To take a two-point lead with two to play. Your opponents are surely going to use their power play after that. Dropkin with the run, opening things up and just leaving their own in the forefoot, but opening it to the point that, again, as we just mentioned, very good chance of having some kind of simple shot to score a point by clearing that forefoot open. So that's a very good shot by Corey. is an update again on matchup over on sheet D still 4-3 person replies leading playing the sixth power play is in play for Anderson and Stepera looking like they might be set up to put up a couple and Richardson playing the open hit it's up on the nose all three of those stones pretty much even up, Eileen, so. No doubles here. And the main focus for, for TC and Dropkin is just going to try to be, is there a way for us to score two, as long as we have this open? Just a little hit and roll on this stone, trying to get underneath their own center guard. Corey Dropkin's thrown this particular shot a few times during this game, this outturn, hack weight type shot. Caffio adding the stocking cap now. He's getting a little bit chilly. Looking 
something like board weight from Dropkin. I feel like I'd hurt something trying to jump up that quick like Corey does. He doesn't yeah, it, waste any time. It's a talent for sure. Just ends up on the nose, so a little opportunity now for Anderson and Richardson with Ben's final stone to get the roll themselves. Maybe set up a possible steal left, opportunity. Yeah. yeah, and if he makes that roll, you know, Corey would be having to play a run back with Ben and Taylor's rock, uh, which makes things a little bit trickier. Same type of shot now for Ben Richardson as Corey Dropkin just threw. Saw Corey's run a little bit straighter than he expected, I think. See if Ben's comes up a little more. Trying to turn over. Now takes a late turn, and that's going to over. Maybe a little surprised by the amount of curl on that shot. And that will open up a draw to four foot underneath their own center guard. on yep. playing this exact shot two ends ago so they know the line the weight long as things haven't changed and the ice has stayed very consistent throughout games as well I mean not just game to game but it's held up till later in the game I haven't had too many instances we've seen where you're losing a ton of speed getting to the end of the game the ice has been fantastic I just was telling John in the car ride back over here that this might be some of the best ice I have ever played on. The speed has been super consistent, really nice curl. It makes it so fun to play on such great ice. So trying to get this intern draw to finish up. Hopkin needs to bury this a little more. It was all the way to the button, mostly buried. The distance between the guard and the rock on the button, Eileen, should be able to dig this out. If they can get to nose, then this gets a little bit dicey because in order to score, they have to play the hit. And anything playing a hit when you need to stick around against four, that's a knee knocker a little bit. It's a, it's a lot tougher playing that shot knowing that any kind of half miss could cost you four points. Very important shot again for Taylor Anderson. Want to get as close to this guard as they can. Put the pressure back on TC and Dropkin. Hack weight in turn. It's like a little outward momentum on that release. Needs to turn over. Yep, sweeping for the curl here now. Yep. Head straight. Definitely turned over. Oh, this is a great shot here from Taylor. Really good. Show is half. Boy, she's made some good shots in this game. Now Corey will have to follow her down and try to do the same thing. Oh, a disastrous situation over on sheet D. Vicky Persinger playing a possible triple. Ends up jamming and rolling out, and it's a free draw for four for Anderson and Stepera. Would take a three-point lead with this draw. probably an inch off of making the triple and instead clears no stones. So tough when the, the best make and the worst miss are right next I'm to each so other close. on their shots. It's not as though Vicky threw a horrible shot. It just is so close to being perfect that ends up the worst case scenario. and Corey taking some extra time here to really talk about where they want that ice and exactly the weight to be thrown to make this shot. Yeah, and the good thing for, for TC here is that they have a stopper rock. If this ever does hang out, you can sweep to play it thin. Even if you don't catch enough to clear that stone, 
you can use that rock in the side of the eighth foot to not give up a pile. Yeah, even a half a rock. This needs to curl too. A little wider path than Taylor Anderson's was on. Now it's curling up. How far will it roll? And still plenty good. This is a single, good shot from TC. Pressure pack shot there. Now they lead after six ends of play, 5-3 over Anderson and Richardson. Just because you're not a professional athlete doesn't mean that you should accept less. The beauty about what Thorne does is our product quality is the same whether they're in the athletic line or whether they're just for the everyday person. Thorne has kept true to never compromising on quality, never compromising on efficacy, never compromising on safety for not only athletes but for everyone who would use their products. On to the seventh end here in this feature matchup, 2023 USA Curling Mixed Doubles National Championships. There you see myself, Tyler George, and good friend Eileen Geving, good friend and Olympian Eileen Geving. Eileen, why don't you tell us a little bit about Warm Room Hero? Yeah, Warm Room Hero is more than just software. It's run by curlers dedicated to building long-term relationships with your club. Warm Room Hero provides continuous support to ensure your website exceeds your members' expectations. Check out Warm Room Hero today at curling.club for special event pricing. What a pro, folks. That is Warm Room Hero. Thanks again to Anthony DeArco, Windy City Curling Club, supporting the event and sponsoring both national championships. I feel like with all the Warm Room Hero reads I've done over the last few weeks, I should get some royalties from any sales they might have. I'll have to talk with Anthony about that. Power play here in seven. Perfect. And great shot and starting TC, out again. Really nice to push like that into back. the forefoot. Really well executed. I have to say to Eileen, watching the these games, the uh, quarterfinal games, the yeah, semifinals too, the level of play has been so high. And it's always fun to see teams playing at their best in these big situations. You never want to see somebody have a a rough game or struggle in the ones that really matter and and really the TC drop in squad has only That's been it. a little bit better a little room actually hasn't Girl. been that Taylor and Ben Girl. haven't played well Girl. exactly all teams are making a lot of shots here although it does look like Taylor came up a little light on this one so I, I really put a What's that? Terrible announcer's jinx on that one. Okay. Yeah, I do. Seems like the jinxes always come when you're trying to say something positive about a team or a shot that they're playing. I have noticed that. <laughs> but of course, I mean, I'm not going to sit up here and say, well, I don't think they're going to make this. Or right. I, I don't okay. think they throw this turn real well. well like most so. of the time, they just continue <laughs> to keep us correct. Yeah. Okay. Mine's really nice. Already dropped and throwing this rock right into the top of the four foot. That is a pretty significant miss from Anderson there. Rock settles into the top of the eight foot, staggered a little bit. I mean, now you're trying to figure out how do we set up this end so with TC and Drop can have three shots left. They'd really like to 
get more than two if they can, but. Yeah, Anderson Richardson, it's, it's interesting with mixed doubles versus men's and women's, you know, in men's and women's, you just think, well, we'll just play this double and set our two and call it good. But it's really, really difficult in mixed doubles to continue to just hit and stick throughout the end. You've played so many draws and it's so important to keep that placement well that sometimes just playing the double, you have to be 100% throughout to not leave a double or to not roll out. Otherwise your two is gone. So you really have to decide, you know, do we think that we can stick around and not leave them a double or do we need to play a lightweight bump type situation to make sure that our rocks are staying in the rings. And Taylor mentions shot I was considering too, drawing around those two red stones to the back of the eight foot. The way the angles play, it'd be tough to remove that rock. You really would give one crack at the cross house double and that'd be about it. Playing the soft weight out turn pass. Not a bad result there. Stays in front of the red stone, but probably not a double attempt. There could be one available, but we don't need to take it on and take that risk. They're content to limit it to a max of two points for Anderson and Richardson. And hitting and sticking, these would be even up too, so. If they can execute the rest of this end, they may be able to get a there. force opportunity. You want a little less, though? Dropkin playing the intern hit. Right on the nose, and maybe roll in a couple inches would be ideal. foot maybe could take on the hit yeah and roll that over to a freeze yeah and get some separation between you want your shooter and that yellow that you're bumping up to get some separation to make any doubles a little bit more difficult on Corey and Corey I think maybe the same type of weight Eileen that Ben just threw they want to play the weight that when it kicks off of this red stone the roll goes to dead frozen with a flat roll. So I'm thinking that's probably close to normal, somewhere in there, maybe a yeah, hair more than that. Somewhere around a 10 from hog to hog is about what he threw. And I believe they're taking similar ice here, so. Richardson playing a almost identical shot to what he just threw. Really like that yellow stone that's raised in to roll across on top of the other red. It just hits a little just a too little thin. thin. Doesn't lose the other Will red they stick either. Stick around for a second. Now it does look like red is sitting two from here. Yeah, that's unfortunate there. If it curls up even another half inch at the very least. Both of the yellow stones are still in the house and one red is gone. Two points can be very difficult now for Anderson Richardson. You're probably gonna see a freeze plate on that number one counter on their next one, regardless of where this ends up from Dropkin. Corey just playing this smart and peeling the rock out, not taking any chances. Yeah, they don't need any rocks damage. in the house at this point, anything left could potentially be used by Ben and Taylor as a means of something to come around or freeze upon. So just peeling it out there. Yeah, and that's the wise play there. No need to do anything different. You may see a little bit of a rally over here on sheet D, depending on this final shot. That sticks on the double attempt. So now a free draw for three for Vicki Persinger to tie that game up going to the final end. Back and forth battle over there. Yeah, and both teams over on that game have used their power plays now, um, both resulting in big ends. So they'll 
if Mickey, Vicky makes this draw here, they'll be tied up coming home with normal mixed doubles play around the center. Richardson playing the freeze here. Really need to lock this on. Maybe a place they could put it where that red stone on the side of the 12 foot would be a stopper if it's frozen right on that rock. And just doesn't quite curl enough, so there should be plenty of room to remove that for TC. Sorry? Just straight peel. I mean, you can hit on nose, it goes through. I don't think there's a spot where that would jam, so pretty safe. Here is that draw for three on sheet D. So that game will be 7-7, seven, seven, going to the final end of play. I like being able to say final end of play, because I really doubt there's going to be a win. Yeah. <laughs> I've said it a few times where you think, well, no, it could be an extra end. Make a liar out of me. Yeah, so Anderson and Stapera will have the hammer over on that sheet coming home. And if you'd like to pull up more than just one game, you can go to USA Curling's YouTube channel and have two games up. You won't have our voices on there, but you will get to see the game. For some that have been listening to me all week, that might be preferable at this point. Nice shot from TC and sticks around, so be a draw for one for Taylor Anderson. All important point to stay in this game. And with mixed doubles, Eileen stealing one, not a really tall task. We're looking at the clock a little bit right now, and it's two minutes and 17 seconds will be remaining for the final end. I believe they still have their Both teams timeout. still with their timeout, yep. Out turn draw from Taylor Anderson here. Although TC and Dropkin will have their power, power play. play coming home if Taylor makes this draw here. That's well made again by does. Taylor. So with that single point, TC and Dropkin will lead 5-4 going to the eighth end and have their power play to use. We'll see how this game finishes up when we come back. The everyday person may not aspire to be a professional athlete or an Olympic athlete. You may just want to be the best person you can be. You just may want to sleep better. You may want to feel better. Thorn has many products that can support all of those things. So it's not just about performing or running faster or jumping higher. It's those little things that go into having a higher quality of life. Eighth end of this feature matchup. Semifinals of the 2023 USA Curling Mixed Doubles National Championships. TC and Dropkin leading 5-4 with Hammer and using the power play. Over Anderson Richardson, Tyler George, and Eileen Geving on the call. Eileen having that power play now. We, we mentioned in the sixth we were maybe a little surprised that they didn't use the power play at that point, but works out perfectly with each team scoring one the last two ends. Saving the power play for the eighth end, giving themselves the best chance of keeping things open in the center to win this game. Right, yeah, it'll be interesting if uh, Corey and Corey decide to 
possibly play a tick even on this guard or whether to come around it here. Looks as though she's playing a tick and doing everything that they can to try to keep that center open so that they have a way in to score. Does move that stone over, rolls under the corner guard. There's rocks really over there, kind of immaterial for TC and Dropkin. They don't plan on having those be game winners. It does move that stone off the center. Pretty good result there. Just far enough maybe that that draw to the button path is open. Richards are trying to replace that. You see where Taylor's putting her broom for placement of the stone keeping it above that other corner guard now they don't have an open side to peel it to this is a smart call they have to peel it to one side or the other and there is jam on both sides as we see Corey Dropkin lining up which direction they want to go if they can make that double peel it needs to be thin on that stone number one so they don't roll it to the center number two so they don't roll it into their own counters in the side of the house. So a couple different ways this can go awry if it hits the wrong spot on that second yellow stone. I think you might see a little extra juice on this one from Dropkin just to, to make sure that they, he gives himself a little more margin for error with yeah. coming off of that second guard if it does. Hitting it a little harder and hopes that if it does hit the wrong spot that it can keep rolling as far as possible out of the way. He definitely did that. There, exactly what we talked about, though. Sticks and leaves it a little bit closer to the center. So, Eileen, now I think your, your rock placement at this point, at least, is dead above that yellow one. Because if you stagger it and leave it on the center line, then Dropkin then has the double peel. But if it's dead above it, then there is the double peel where the shooter would stick around. Exactly. You always want to have it on the center line if you can, but not at this point. You need this guard to stay in play. You need at least one of the guards to stay in play. Even if that rock is still there and that's the one you're going around later, it still covers a good piece of the forefoot. This one may be over I curling a little bit. they are going for more on the center line. They're hoping it stops higher to leave more separation between those two yellows makes that double more difficult. Yeah. Any time that there's more space between the rocks, removing them both gets harder and harder. Yeah, I think Ben wasn't real happy with where that one ended up, over, over curling a little bit and coming a little deeper than they like. And again, Eileen, that same miss that we've talked about with guards over curling and not taking, again, the same broom for the guard as you take for the draw of the house on this USA national ice. That's been a hallmark of what we've seen for over a decade. You don't cut the broom down to throw a guard. It curls so early that yeah. it really is the same broom for a draw into the house as it is for a guard. Hopkin playing the double peel this time. Very close, needs to get up just a little bit. And makes it perfectly. Great shot by Corey. Really nice shot. It's going to make things a lot easier for the last two shots. And a timeout now by Ben and Taylor. We'll see Coach Wayne Anderson come out and talk about this one. Cooling timeouts on both the yeah, sheets. Yeah, timeout on both sheets, it looks like. I was hoping they'd go at the exact same time and have a race between Mark and Wayne to see who got to the other end. i got to be honest, I might take Wayne. <laughs> So options here, Eileen, I think the first shot you need to play with this next one would be that freeze on the rock under the corner. Hopefully. Yeah, and I think the higher in the house, the better. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be shot rock, even if it is up in the top 12, make it a little difficult to remove. I mean, I think you'd want to be frozen, but the tolerance there being a little bit lighter and the goal being that you want to make as long as you don't have something in the center to go around you want to make your opponent look at two on their last shot being down by one so if you make that freeze and you make it well enough that it can't be removed with just a straight hit you probably see uh, 
Corey Tiesi throw a draw just to the open side, maybe top four foot on the opposite side of the sheet. And then it's an open hit and stick for Anderson and Richardson to make them look at two, but a wide open shot on your last if TC dropped it. So if I'm predicting the next three shots, I'm saying freeze under the corner, draw to top fours on the opposite side, open hit for the win. Even see that stone go to half a four foot, even full eights on the opposite side to separate them a little more. Really anything that stays away from that pile. Yeah, and sometimes here, you know, the other option, if they wanted, they could throw another center guard. And you know that Corey and Corey would then be peeling it, and then you play that freeze. Um, but you do give Corey the whole house to draw to, or, you know, where she would only have to touch probably half into the eights. So... I, I do like that freeze, personally. That is what they're calling here, freezing on the corner. So we have our first call correct. The other two calls are predicated on this being made as well. <laughs> if that chips off and it's open, obviously it'll just be a, an open hit. If they have the option to play an open hit, TC drop, you will play that shot. Turn freeze attempt, Ben Richardson's final stone. Looks like it's got a long ways to curl as it now. Ben likes the weight. Really nice shot by Ben there. Not bad, yeah, it's, it's open but question is is it behind that red yeah. where it, the top red yeah, it might catch the side of that red stone in which case be really tough not to remove it right. really probably needed to keep sweeping that one a little bit more and try to get a couple inches behind that red and maybe wouldn't be able to take it out tough though when you're <laughs> throwing to a spot that small and trying to freeze on either or I mean you're within inches on line of it being perfect so I'd expect this to have some pretty good weight on it as well from Dropkin. Give themselves some more margin for error. Final stone will be on the way on the opposite sheet too. Looks like Sarah Anderson. They have a double on two yellows on the top of the forefoot. Doesn't look like the easiest shot. Dropkin does indeed lose that one and rolls all the way across so freeze on that stone basically be the same as the other side so they'll freeze on the underneath the corner again here's sarah's last or a trip to the national final and makes it she makes it so we will have one anderson at least in the national final game Undefeated run from our Olympic team ends in the semifinals. Sarah Anderson and Andrew Stapera will advance to the national championship game. So out turn freeze for Taylor Anderson to try to keep their hopes alive. At least force Corey Tisi to make her final shot. looked like plenty of line here probably has to curl quite a bit to get there and hasn't started curling yet see how much Richards can it's get this to really go. curling all of a sudden is the weight there weight looks good Richardson trying to get this to turn over actually going around that stone now really well placed that's a pretty good shot <laughs> I think that's about as good as you can do it because you're actually full in the eight foot too, so it cuts a little bit more of the house down. So a decision for TC, whether or not she wants to play the hit or the draw, where they put that broom, it could be either. <laughs> yeah, it looked to me like they were gonna peel this out. Yeah, and it's it's just a preference here. There is no right or wrong decision. They called timeout to 
save themselves a little bit of time, but plenty of time left on the clock. And no need to talk about it. See Kathy O never moved from her chair. And they are playing the outturn peel. Just need contact for the win. To continue their undefeated run. Go on to the national championship game. Corey Tisi's final stone. Good clean throw there from TC. To be just fine. And that and will be a game it. winner. So TC and Dropkin put up two for good measure. Final score 7 4 over Taylor Anderson and Ben Richardson. Really great run from Taylor and Ben from almost being out of this tournament all the way to the national semifinals and boy a really well played game can't really fault Ben and Taylor for how they played they made a ton of shots and really the difference being the the level of difficulty of the shots that each team is playing TC and Dropkin making a lot of really good draws positioning rocks well and keeping their opponents from being able to attack they really Never were any big opportunities for Ben and Taylor throughout the game. And here we see that bracket. Tomorrow's championship final. Sarah Anderson, Andrew Stepera will be taking on Corey Tisi and Corey Dropkin. Pretty confident that'll be our feature game, as yeah, there are I no other games so. going. Oh. And just to confirm, too, that game being at 11 a.m. Eastern time. We will be here at 11 a.m. for that game. Again, the final 7-4, TC and Dropkin over Anderson Richardson. Eileen, thanks so much for joining. A lot of fun doing the game with you and, uh, and in the curling world, of course. Almost anybody that comes in the booth is going to be a friend, but we've known each other for a very long time now. And uh, funny the roads that, uh, that we take that bring us to these places, right? Yeah, thank you for having me. So for Tyler George, Eileen Geving, and all the Curling Stadium crew, we will see you tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern for the National Championship game. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you then.